In round 7 of the Asian Chess Championship, Wang Hao of China faced off against Surya Shikhar Ganguly from India. Both of them were joint leaders of the tournament together with 6 other players on 4.5 out of 6. Wang Hao had white in this game, Ganguly with the black pieces, and Wang Hao opened with e4. Ganguly responded with e5. Knight f3 played, knight c6, and we have the Italian game with bishop c4. So here black responds with bishop c5. We have d3, knight f6, both sides castle. So here the standard move is to play c3, but uh, Wang Hao goes knight b to d2. d6 played, and now Wang Hao goes c3. a6 to give the bishop a flight square. So here bishop back to b3, and bishop e6, challenging white's annoying bishop. Wang Hao goes bishop c2, and now Ganguly strikes in the center with d5. We have e takes, bishop takes, and h3 now, just stopping knight g4 before going rook to e1. Rook e8 played, we have rook to e1, and now black played h6. Wang Hao played b4, attacking the bishop, also gaining more space on the queen side. So Ganguly could drop his bishop back to a7, keeping it on this strong diagonal. But here he played bishop back to f8, so looking to give some protection to his king with a bishop fianchetto. And in this position, Wang Hao taught for 16 minutes before playing the move a4. This brought his time all the way down to under 40 minutes on just move 14. So will this be a significant factor? We'll soon find out. So previously in this position, bishop b2 was played. Uh, it was played by Ho Yifan against Lauren Fresenate in 2016, a game which Ho Yifan won. So here a4 was played, with the idea of potentially going b5, and black has to watch out for this uh, pawn on e5. So b5 right away isn't possible because of the, the rook will hang on a1, but uh, black has to keep that in mind. So here black went g6, preparing to fianchetto with bishop g7. So knight e4 played by Wang Hao, making room for this bishop. He could also have played in this position bishop to b2. For one, this defends the rook, so b4 is now a threat. Uh, white is also getting ready to challenge black's bishop on this long diagonal, also putting some pressure with the bishop on e5. So bishop b2 is a decent move to consider, but here knight e4 played. Bishop to g7, bishop d2, and knight to d7, anticipating b5, so giving more protection to the e5 pawn. Note that black could also have played instead of knight to d7, here knight takes e4, and bishop e6. So here black should be fine, and e5 is no longer a target for the rook. But knight d7 played, Wang Hao continues on with b5, knight to e7. So here Wang Hao played bishop b3. He could also have played c4. Perhaps this was more challenging for black. After bishop e6, one idea is to play a5 trying to suffocate black on the queen side and discouraging him from going b6. And then white might consider taking here on a6 and try to use this open b file uh, with his rook, maybe even his queen. So this is one way to play the position c4 definitely could potentially cause black some problems. But instead bishop b3 played. And this doesn't seem to pose too much difficulties for black. Here Ganguly took on b5, bishop takes d5 play, knight takes, a takes b5, the rooks are traded, and knight to f8, perhaps looking to come into e6. So here Wang Hao thought for 7 minutes before playing the move c4. But this seems a bit too nonchalant because this knight is going to go to f4 anyway to attack d3. Instead, Queen to a7 seems more active, trying to get some counterplay. But here c4 and we have knight to f4. Wang Hao decides to remove that annoying knight. And now black's bishop comes alive on this long diagonal. 
So now Wang Hao invested 13 minutes into this next move, bringing his time all the way down to under a minute. He played d4. So in this position, perhaps White should have again tried queen to a7 for counterplay. Note that a uh, queen takes c3 right away isn't possible because White has knight to f6, followed by taking the rook. So here, instead of trying to be active, d4 played, closing down this diagonal. But now this becomes the target. 96 from Ganguly, putting more pressure here. And this position is becoming very uncomfortable for Wang Hao. With such little time, there's a good chance that white could go wrong here. So white could have held on with knight e to d2, trying to go knight b3 to consolidate d4. Note here that taking is impossible because this can be met with the in-between move, rook takes e8, and then take on d4. So here black could try c6. The idea is not to allow white to have the option of going d5. Uh, white might be able to hold on here, but it's not going to be easy. So here after knight to e6, Wang Hao played queen to c1, trying to trade off this d-pawn for the f-pawn. But this loses now because of the pin on the e-file. So here Ganguly takes advantage of this, he plays f5. Note that if the knight drops back to g3, then here knight takes f3, removes the defender of the rook. So here, knight takes d4 played, bishop takes, queen takes h6, rook to, rook to e6, defending g6. So here rook to d1, pinning the bishop. And queen to e3, hoping to win back the piece. But rook d6 keeps the material. Queen takes e4 plate. Ganguly plays bishop takes f2 check, opening up the, a discovery on the rook. King takes f2, and now one last precise move required from black. If he plays rook takes d1, white can actually get away with a perpetual after queen takes g6. So here black's king can't escape from the barrage of checks from the white queen. So here the king has to step to e7 or to e8 so that the queen keeps watch of the rook. And here a queen g5 check and black's king cannot escape. So here after king to f2, king takes f2, queen f6 check plate. So this covers g6, also e6, and here Wang Hao resign. If king to e2, trying to defend the rook, then here rook to e6, pins and wins the queen. So with this win, Ganguly now leads the tournament together with the Iranian Grandmaster Tabatabai at 5.5 out of 7. Thanks for watching and see you soon.